Josh, uh, right, my phone here. Um, all right, so we'll call the coordinate subcommittee meeting to order for December 10th, 2014. Um, looks like it's just the two of us. So. Uh, yeah, you really? Yeah. Um, do, does anybody have anything in the public to talk about tonight before we get into our agenda? Where's Joe? Joe McCoy? I'm not sure where Joe McCoy is. Was he supposed to be here? Um, he didn't tell me he was going to be here. So. Is he on this committee? No. He's not? No. no he's, he is the president. So he's kind of de facto on all the committees. I see. But, um, but he's not right now on ordinance. Um, <clears throat> so since there's no um, nobody from the public, unless you, you want to say anything? No? Okay. Um, then we can approve our minutes from um, August 27th and September 24th. Mm -hmm. right, second, all in favor? Hi. Hi, beautiful. Done and done. Okay, um, so the request to review the uh, classification and play pay plan. Is that what you guys are here for? Okay. Um, so the way Karen explained it to me was it seemed like it was pretty straightforward. Um, that you want to kind of detach some of the departments from some of the specific titles. Uh, so there's a little bit more leeway to be able to hire without being locked into a specific pay grade. Great. Okay. Can you explain that a little bit more? I mean, I guess. Sure. Um, for example, if in the mayor's office, for example, if in my office, if I'm in personnel, if my employee leaves and I want to change the job, you know, based on the duties, I really, I can't do it because the job title is personnel assistant. Right. So if it was just, you know, if we just had a clerk title right. or, or an assistant, right, you know, okay. it would, I, we wouldn't have to keep creating positions every time we want to um, replace an employee. So it, it would be kind of a, a almost a transitional position? Because mm -hmm. would this person have the ability to work their way to become that assistant? They could. It all depends on, you know, how the, the department is, is heading. You know, for right. example, we were kind of, what did we say, 12? Principal clerk, different or ten different principal clerk positions. Whereas if we just had one principal clerk or just one clerk position title, excuse me, that each department would still be responsible for paying that. It would be in their budget. Mm -hmm. They still have management over it, but they could advertise for. Yeah, as I say, if they left and the position, they said, you know, the position now with change in the software or the change in we're not handling this in-house anymore we don't need this level position we need this level position so that's where we're looking at because each one of these comes with its specific grade mm -hmm. because so, of the specific duties that it has attached to it right now is can you give me any so how would this look if we were to move forward with this um can you help me envision that how you know how this you know the, the positions with the grade we would how would it look we would just have one spot that says clerk and it would have a range of it would grades have, it would have a grade i think if you look almost all the assistants are the same all the clerks are the same grade except that if you wanted to let's say for if you have, the, the problem is that we have such small offices that if you have a vacancy and during that period of that vacancy you go well then now's the time to rethink what what the position has grown into what it's become or what it's what it it's is up or down yeah, up or either way. there is no ability for us to hire for what we think is needed even though the job descriptions are sort of out there as like a principal clerk or an assistant to the department head because our department has this Right. which means we'd have to come to council which means that that vacancy remains open until such time that we get through this process okay. and there's a lot of jobs on here that don't exist anymore right. but those positions we haven't filled um, for instance 
I'm the treasurer, but I'm also the finance director. Right. So we, we still have it on there. Right. So if, I guess if you wanted to separate them, you could, but, you know, I mean, I guess I could hire a treasurer in my office and not a payroll clerk, which is maybe what I need. Right. Because I can't hire a clerk because there's no clerk in the treasurer's office. But I can hire a department head. Right. That doesn't make sense. Right, right, right. <laughs> and so, so what would we sp specifically, I, I get that. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Um, so as we would as we would look at trying to add to this to give the, the flexibility, um, what specific things would we be, would you, are you guys suggesting that we add? I think just the generic um, principal clerk position and um, maybe generic um, assistant department head position or maybe, um, I mean there's only one business manager on there. I'm not sure if you wanted uh, with the office manager for DPW. Yeah, well, kind of what we're looking to do is take out the specific department. Department. So have have one that could go across right. departments. Right. Because like there's council on aging receptionists. Now, granted, we don't have receptionists here, but should something have changed in the future, we, you know, we wouldn't have the capability of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe we created the receptionist when they no longer had a council on aging clerk which, which is, is still, still on the which list is still on there. but they needed a lesser position they needed a reception so, so they had to come to council and, right, right. right and like there's a title of a part-time clerk but it has police department so if we wanted to hire you know just hired for health for the health department if you, that technically is a part-time clerk position mm -hmm. but it came through as principal clerk health department for only 10 hours. What would, do you have any idea of what the reaction of the employees who currently have a more restrictive definition, whether or not they're in support of this, or is this going to create a um, problematic uh, atmosphere for people who, for example, they have one supervisor because they're assigned to a very specific clerk job and they prefer to be, but so far I hadn't seen that type of flexibility. Is there going to be that type of unanticipated consequences? Well, it wouldn't change anybody's supervisor. Uh, you know, they would still have the same, whatever department they're hired into, they would still be their staff manager mm -hmm. or department head that would be responsible for that staff manager. So that I just mean for the, um, Oh, to have their title changed? No. To be creating a new title, will that have any effect on the people who are currently working who don't have access to that title and they have a more restrictive title? I don't think so because we're really looking at more of the, the base level. I think that if you took, like if you look at all of these principal clerks and you just drop the end off, they're all still going to have exactly the same exactly. job, mm -hmm. and they're going to have ex they're going to be the principal clerk that happens to work in the in the building inspector's office. Right. Oh, okay. I think yeah. I misunderstood the language. So you're tr you're saying let's change all of the existing clerk jobs to have no designation in the job title, I in addition to future hires. Or keep, of having, keep them on there, and then in the future also have the flexibility for one that's not defined. So instead of having eight principal clerks, you have yeah, a principal, principal clerk. clerk. Um, and okay. You know, and then possibly create like just a clerk position, or you know, just to have the title mm -hmm. attached to a grade mm -hmm. for future. You know. So within the clerk position would be below. You know, would be like a. a Four, three or four. Or right. It would be, you know, like a file clerk. You know, mm -hmm. principal clerk would stay at five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not trying to change the, the grades. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's that's good information. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to say? Okay. Good. Um, if Karen, you want, Karen we can work out. We can work out more of the specific specific language. If you want yeah, and just email it. And um, you know, I Karen said there wasn't a huge rush on this. No, so it just sort of like we looked at it and it was like something, yeah, so a way to Because we've mind. had a lot of the six hour position, the 10 hour position, and when you start looking at really, we're going to put a you know, that.
job do those job duties at that level because that's the job title associated with it. Mm -hmm. We really started looking at it from, you know, also a financial standpoint mm -hmm. as well as you know because we want to put the right person in there, but yet we don't want the city to lose money on it. Right. So why don't, why don't you if you can you know. Um, get those things together, like exactly what the, you want the titles to be and the pay grades and stuff. And then probably at our next meeting we can, when and when Karen's around, we can, you know, make a decision on it and get it to the full council. Sounds good? Thank you. Awesome. All right. We've got a little audience here tonight. This is wonderful. <laughs> and I don't know what to start with. Signs? Because I feel like signs could be yeah, signs. You want signs? I mean, I know I know David Gardner here is, is, is a fan of signs. So... Um, I'm not here for that. Though. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's why I said but I don't know where to right. start. But I'm, I'm interested. In uh, yeah, me too, actually. So, Dan, you want to start with Sure. Um, what this involved um, is uh, back in October, um, the mobile station up on Northampton Street, that's how I got involved being the Precinct 1 counselor, uh, went to the building inspector to put up a LED display for gas pricing. Um, and at that time, the uh, building inspector, which I, I, most of these documents are in here, uh, the building inspector turned them down, stating that he felt that it was an electronic messaging center uh, by ordinance and that he did not feel it could be put in other than Mill Industrial, which goes back to our council, which you yeah. were on, I know tomorrow wasn't on it at the time, uh, and that he saw no distinction between a changeable sign and a electric sign and a messaging center so denied the permit the next letter after that one is sort of from the uh, zoning board of appeals to back to the building inspector which their take is that they felt there is something in there called a changeable sign and felt that he should issue the building permit they, they there was a application for a special permit um, and as part of that they felt he should be uh, they should issue, he should issue a building permit for a changeable sign. Uh, and so they talked to the applicant and the applicant actually dropped his special permit request and went back to the building inspector again and again the building inspector rejected the building permit for a, an electronic sign. It's now still in the process, I believe it's coming up later this week, where the Zoning Board of Appeals is now going to hear a uh, appeal of the building inspector's decision. Uh, and so in, in talking with, I started with uh, um, President McCoy and, and Dan Riss because they were on the council at the time and got their feelings and they felt that it was pretty clear. I, I ran the minutes that we talked about signs. I know, in fact, you maybe had a different thing that maybe we should allow something like that. And I believe it was you even put in a motion which was defeated very c close. It was like 5-4 yeah. and then the final thing was passed with one abstention which I believe was Councillor Cobb. So what we're trying to do here is, um, and there's another letter from the city solicitor which he talks about um, Pretty much, and again, you, you know, I'm not going to read it to you. You're, you, you know, you can take your own thing from it. But if you read the first part, he kind of says the zoning board of appeal has the right to kind of make determinations of what they feel. But he goes on at the other thing and says, but that doesn't end the inquiry because he doesn't feel there is anything called a changeable sign. It's only a definition. It's only mentioned as a definition. There's a, a, a list of signs that are permitted, and there's no such thing permitted as a changeable sign. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that under 10-1 that there is no sign, so he doesn't feel you could put a ch what they call a changeable sign in any in any zone. So he recommended, uh, he, this was given to them and they basically said they didn't care what the city solicitor said, they felt that the permit should be issued. So that's kind of where the process is. So what I proposed is uh, three things, is one to just remove the definition of changeable sign because if there is no sign called a changeable sign why do we define what a changeable sign is if there's no sign under 10-1 of permitted signs why do we even have a definition of what a changeable sign is and then under 10-3 which is the definitions of the language uh, where I think where the zoning board if you read it is getting 
An electronic messaging center is said an external computer programmable sign capable of displaying words that can be altered by remote means. They're saying programmable. They're using the thing programmable as being more than any electronic device is programmed to display, whether it's just a number of saying that this would be displaying a message. That's how they're taking it. Mm -hmm. And so what I, we were trying to do in, in this proposal is add specific language to LED or LCD lighting so that it's very specific that any of that lighting is a electronic messaging center and would only be allowed in the mill industrial district. And that's what the, so we want to change the definition of an electronic messaging center, which the, my proposals or the language I propose, and certainly it's well within the committee's um, purview to amend, change, or not even bring forward the, uh, those particular new definitions of electronic messaging center. And then to also, under the 10-4 general standards, add the exterior sign capability of the LED, LCD, electronic messaging also in that general standard, so it's very specific. That's, that's the only place that LED lighting like that is allowed is in, in, in a electronic messaging center. So that's the gist of the proposal. Again, you can read through it, and as I said, there's the letter from the planning board, the letter from the city solicitor, and then the definition of what those signs are, and then the general standards, and then my my language for changing those general standards. Um, again, I don't know how this is going to play out in the zoning, uh, but it's something I think at least myself and, and President McCoy felt that we should really tighten up that language around LED lighting because I did pull, as I said, I did pull the minutes of the city council of what our um, discussion what our discussion was and what I think what I believe our intent was and uh, so mm -hmm. we're trying to bring it back to what that intent is so mm -hmm. that's the basically the proposal that we're bringing forward so. okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. it was not I would say it wasn't part of City Council mm -hmm. when those initial discussions were occurring and I was just wondering how what were LA, LED lighting really part of the cultural landscape at that point in time or has that developed since oh no they were they were being used and I, I think that was why it came up because some cities are allowing them some cities are not and I think the discussion was around does, does East Hampton want to keep kind of the uh, I know we've we we have progressed in a lot of ways and I think a lot of good ways in but I think at least the majority of the council felt that going down the road of LED lighting wasn't necessarily in the best interest of keeping a character of, of East Hampton in the neighborhoods like they were. The one exception was and I, I initially I was against it but I think made sense in the end we did a, say make a provision for the mill area because where you have some of these new big mills that are being uh, developed with several stores in, uh, in housing that it might make sense there to allow them where you would have multiple rather than cluttering up a huge sign with a lot of, of things that you might allow it and it has to be a hundred thousand square foot mill that, that, that it would be allowed in. So mm -hmm. uh, again that was I think the, the, the reasoning behind it. So. And, and just a little bit around that particular topic uh, in discussion as it was making its way to the City Council um, uh, Will Bundy, one of the, the EastWorks owner, he had been interested prior to uh, the sign ordinance revisions uh, in having such a, a, an electronic message center sign uh, at EastWorks and he came before the Zoning Board of Appeals when I was uh, on the ZBA uh, with a, a proposal for a number of signs including uh, an electronic message center sign. Uh, it was not allowed by our ordinance at the time so by taking that out of his proposal, he got everything he asked for, but still had in the back of his mind, wouldn't it be cool to be able to do that? So in the end, when the sign ordinance was revised, um, it was thought that by allowing it in the middle uh, in my district, that uh, especially if uh, Mr. Bundy was interested in having one, then it would happen there, and then people could see how it went, you know, could kind of get a sense of like, what are these things about, how does the community feel about them, before moving ahead and allowing them to be used in other zones. Um, that's my memory of, of events around that. So. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there was one other thing about the, uh, the, the permit uh, issue with the building department uh, for this request for this, and that is, to the Zoning Board of Appeals, the actual request uh, in front of the ZBA was to, uh, it was requesting an exception 
to the zoning ordinance under uh, 10.04e. If you look that up, you'll see, and it's a very disconcerting uh, little piece of the ordinance in the sign ordinance. It says that the ZBA can give an exception. If you look uh, under any definition um, for, especially concerning law and, and ordinance, an exception is a variance. So essentially, this this 10.04e uh, is is giving the ZBA permission to grant a variance on the spot, an exception, if somebody asks them for something that doesn't fit the ordinance. And so this this uh, petitioner was asking for uh, something that wasn't allowed according to the city solicitor and according to the interpretation of the zoning official, the building inspector. Um, and uh, to the ZBA's credit, they said, well, we're not going to allow this because we don't think an exception is warranted. Is, is warranted because we think it should be allowed. So anyway, mm -hmm. that's that. interesting. Okay. I have one other question for clarification sure. regarding the changeable signs. When I mm -hmm. had read the language when I was going through it myself, uh -huh. I just assumed the changeable sign would be like um, like the McDonald's menu where someone literally goes out there and manually flips it over to change the menu from right. and breakfast I to lunch. Right, and I think that's what a changeable sign is. The thing is, it's, it, someone doesn't really go and say, I need want a changeable sign. They go and say, I want a business sign. And a lot of business signs, including gas station prices, are, are changed on a regular right. basis. But I don't believe it was designed to be an LED electronic sign. That's the... I think that the changeable, the way I see it used in the ordinance, is really as a, just a description of another type of sign. So you, you have to get one of the allowable, you know, you have to get one of the allowable signs on the ordinance, and a type of, you know, one of those signs may be changeable. Just to distinguish what a changeable sign is, I don't know how much purpose it really serves in the ordinance. It's just really a description. It's like an adjective, you know, it's like an orange sign versus a red sign, a changeable sign versus a non you know, a static sign. So I think that's the only use that it was certainly intended for in the ordinance. Now, whether these are the ten know, ones, the allowable signs now. Right. right. So, mm -hmm. Again, I can, you could have that come I just read that. So I only made one copy. Of that. And, and the the ZBA did touch on that issue when they were deliberating. Uh, we don't have the camera didn't have a memory card in it, so we don't have any re recording on the meeting, but uh, as uh, but they did say uh, the rationale for apparently reaching a consensus among the board uh, on the issue was that um, if changeable signs were not allowed, then there wouldn't be, you couldn't see them, you know, I mean, you wouldn't see so many around town. Mm -hmm. So. Of course, I know that there are a lot of signs around town that aren't really hmm. quite legal, so that's really not, you know, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. but, it's a year-long process. <laughs> I, was, I feel like it was more than a year. Right, probably more, right? It was more than a year. Right. It was a good process, though. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, this is really good information. Um, I think, uh, it if you wouldn't mind coming back to us. Oh, no, absolutely. Because um, I, th I think in order for us and for Nathan, and Nathan to, to read through it, all mm -hmm. um, we want to be able to spend a little time with it. And um, and that way we can come up with more questions. No, nope. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you very much. All right, on to uh, building size. I'm, I'm gonna. I have to recuse myself on this issue because my wife owns property that might be affected. So okay. I'll leave the key. If you could give this to Salem after the yeah, meeting, yeah. just so he can lock up, and then yeah, you yeah. could stop over, just drop it down. Okay. okay. Is it okay if I meet up on your son while you're gone? You could meet up on the <laughs> morning. I'll, I'll meet you after the end. I'm going to leave. So, okay. Yeah, by the way, most property in town actually would be affected. It's right. more than I'm involved in helping draft the process that the right. Right. are using. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so um, do you guys want to let us know, you know, the, the sure. impetus, the rationale, the sure. reasoning? Uh, yeah, and uh, it's difficult to know where to start because there are so many reasons, but I'll just start with. Um, um, Stop and shop, for instance, and how that process went for the town, um, and how drawn out that was, and what a what a hot issue that was. You know, uh, the idea that a large uh, 
uh, grocery retail uh, chain would would establish itself in uh, East Hampton and and have and you know possibly negatively uh, or adversely impact uh, local businesses, local stores. Um, so, um, but you know here they are, and that's fine. Uh, so so the fifty thousand square foot maximum is is uh, related to the size of Stop and Shop. That that, that is a fifty thousand square foot project. So. Um, not wanting to immediately, uh, you know, create any or propose any kind of ordinance that would cause Stop and Shop to be non-conforming, which comes with some baggage. It wouldn't prevent it from happening. Even you know, it's not started, but but it, it is not. Uh, it's kind of a bar on a on a uh, on a business uh, or a property to be considered non-conforming. So. Uh, and and that East Hampton did accept eventually it really split the community but it passed and there it is and that's fine so uh, so it seems like about what you know it feels right it just felt like a good place to start and if you look at the numbers of uh, associated with uh, cities across the country uh, uh, several in Massachusetts uh, the maximum square footage hovers about that you know if they're somewhere as low as 20,000 feet some are 40,000, some are a little more. Uh, Northampton in 2002 adopted uh, a maximum uh, square foot size of 90,000 square feet. Still, you know, under the size of what uh, uh, huge, like mega big box stores are shooting for. The good news is a lot of those, uh, a lot of those uh, businesses, and I'll just use Walmart as an example, and Stop and Shop is another one, they're actually adopting smaller uh, models, uh, figuring out how to do it because of so much uh, concern that communities have had uh, over them moving into an area. Um, so starting with that, uh, 50,000 square, square foot maximum for, uh, now I know um, Mr. Z uh, Councilor Ziegler isn't here, but I think just in very briefly when I, when I just spoke to him and you were there as well, Sam, he said something about 50,000 square foot but footprint, but um, you know, if buildings were limited to 50,000 square foot footprint and they were allowed to be several stories, well, that would be uh, a, a huge, a huge development. Uh, along with every square foot of retail space comes parking issues. So now, you know, that produces uh, a lot of parking. Um, so. Again, fifty thousand square feet. Stop and shop is is that's what it is. Yeah, it's, it's on, actually, it's it's on several acres uh, mm -hmm. to to accommodate the store and all the parking associated with it. And does that um, does that include the the auxiliary buildings? That if there are, is stop and shop having any? No, it was permitted just the, the business itself. Just the business. So, I mean, it, it has an attached building to it also, but that's included. So the whole what was approved by the planning board is 45,000 or approximately right in the back, mid 40,000 square feet and that would all fall within but within I mean it would not be prohibited by our by this limitation okay now just a quick question before you um, how about like um, planned developments oh they're uh, they would be limited as well but you would see uh, in the material that um, I, uh, you were given uh, the um, uh, there are exceptions and those are affordable housing uh, developments um, uh, mixed-use development that incorporates uh, um, any uh, affordable housing. Um, it uh, doesn't include anything in the uh, uh, any mill use, actual, uh, I'm sorry, uh, industrial use in the industrial zone. So uh, somebody asked me that, like, well, what about, you know, we have, we already have, like, East Works and mill buildings, but this, this uh, ordinance would not prevent those from occurring in the industrial zone, which is, you know, of course where they should be. Right, exactly. One of the challenges in the industrial zone, though, right now is that currently the way our, our, our not our ordinance, but our East Hampton zoning ordinance is written, is that you could put, like, large retail spaces in our in our industrial zone. So what we did was, and this, and you can see it in here, is we said, basically, the limit doesn't apply to any industrial uses in the industrial zone, but would apply to other types of uses, like retail uses and things like that. So, so for example, if the Hilltown Charter School decided they wanted to build off of their like building because they're industrial but my understanding is that institutions like schools and such have uh, are well they can be located in any zone I don't know if the uh, 
yeah. what other uh, rules of the ordinance are subject to. Yeah, what would limit them is if like, they try to put a Walmart or a Home Depot or something like that in our industrial space. Right. It would say, okay, well, you know, because you allow retail uses in the industrial zone, that would be limited, but the industrial uses and uses under the table six. There's five, isn't it? Yeah, the five one. Sorry, yeah. the five one. Everything under the industrial, transportation, and wholesale would be allowed. So it, it would be able to see the limit. No limitation on yeah. that. Okay. Uh, so and like the CNS wholesale place. Yeah. Um, they look right there. They, they would go right. above it, and that'd be fine. And that that also that that ex exception, but also limitation on on retail and industrial. Because if you look at the uses allowed in the industrial zone, it's pretty much everything except housing. You know, it's it's every, everything goes, but yeah, the master plan pointed out, you know, and in, in all of the, uh, I mean, you can look at our maps that we have a limited amount of industrial uh, developable space. Developable space. That's yeah. so. It it seems that if we want industry here, that that should be used for industry. You know, try to at least create an incentive for that to be used for industry. Um, the other part of the proposal is to reduce the what is now a minimum five acres for a planned um, uh, business uh, to uh, from five acres to three acres. Um, the reason for that is that there are not that many five acre parcels uh, available. Uh, three acres uh, parcels are, are certainly much more easy to come by. Um, it would encourage smaller um, developments, uh, and currently in town, I mean, with with the zoning ordinance the way it's been, I've been here for 22 years, and it's been pretty much open for development. And what has happened is the largest building in town that I can think of. I mean, I, I might be wrong, but it would be Valley Medical Building. Um, or East Hampton Savings Bank. They're both pretty big. That's 28. 28.5, East Hampton Savings, the uh, Valley Med is about 30,000. So pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty close, both, that's they're right. They're pretty big. Yeah, yeah, pretty big, and that's been it with no limits. So right. it seems that, and you know how they how they look compared to, you know, in scale and everything, this is kind of, it feels good. So. <laughs> Yeah, just to be uh, just to clarify, I think we're just uh, what they were saying. So uh, right now, our planned business development need a minimum lot. You cannot build it a planned business development on less than five acres. So this would actually be uh, allow more development uh, because you would say you'd say okay, well, you don't need a five acre lot. You can you can actually develop. A so we'd open up lot. probably two or three parcels on on Route Ten, right? I, I, I mean, I don't know the numbers. I mean, would, but that, I, that's something we should figure out. Like looking at the parcels that are open next to next to the door. Mm -hmm. um, right. Dave Boyle's across the street, mm -hmm. um, and and then then right. this side of Route Ten, uh, Bernie Gall's spot next to um, the uh, that little brick or little stone or whatever it is, you know, office building place between mm -hmm. them and Hackworths. All oh, right, I know what you mean. On Main Street, maybe? Yeah. And then I believe there's even some open space across the street from that next to a uh, apartment building. So, I mean, I, I think it, it's going to make a lot of sense for us to take a look at the actual properties that this is going to, and, and see how that change from three to, or five to three is going to affect those. And, you know, I mean, that's, at least that's, I'm not asking you to do that. Yeah. But I'm going to, that's what I'm going to look into because that's what mm -hmm. people are going to ask is how does this affect the actual properties that can be built out? Because there's there's only a few of them. That's right. <laughs> but in terms of you know encouraging development, which I think is is a good thing. I mean, it's always you know very often brought up in a positive context. You know, like development is good, growth is good until uh, until it happens. Right. Well, but I'm just <laughs> saying, that, and then people are that, still positive uh, about it. If you have to, if I were a developer and I had to spring for five acres in order to do something I wanted. Even though the project may be smaller in scale than it would take up, you know, it would take up five acres. Would I spend the money for five acres if I really only needed three? Right. You know, I would encourage a smaller, um, you know, just smaller construction. I so think it would. Doesn't prohibit anything really. Actually, it's actually right. just a just a incentive to. No, I know. Smaller. In that that packet you gave me, which I'm pretty sure my daughter 
Do you want to turn another? something? Yeah, I would actually love another. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you need another? Um, I don't know if you saw some of the pictures here of right. similar buildings. That's what, that's what I wanted to, yeah, to look at. Mr. Gurney, you got any more? Um, well, sure. Absolutely. That's why I brought them. I think uh, that uh, next use is now 10 acres if it's open land. It's 5 acres if it's already built on. But if it's, a, we were talking about just business. Uh, business property. This is ten it's acre. five acres minimum in it's ten acres. It's ten acres for mixed use. If it was pre-built on, it was five acres. I believe that's how it works. In other words, if you got raw land, you need ten acres for mixed use. Yeah, this is this one. Though, it's not just for mixed for, use. It's for this is just for planned business development, though. I think what you're saying Correct. is like for a like in a like in the highway business zone of things, you need like uh, a five acre parcel to get started on it. You know, you need a bigger parcel or bigger land coverage. Um, this is a planned business. So any kind of planned business development, though, in our ordinance is all, is all five acres. So they need a, a minimum of five to get started. We need a ten. Oh, okay. We need a ten. We couldn't do it on five. Okay. Hey. Was it just no, I don't, I don't know. Five. About, <laughs> about the ordinance actually says five. Yeah, they said ten. It was wrong because it, it is. I, I know. I was just looking at it. I know. There's two. There's two. There's one. There's. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it goes about. We'll get to it. Yeah. So it's interesting. Um, uh, Councilor Tiskus and I. I don't know if you remember. Yes. Um, about eight years ago, brought something very similar forward. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I think we were looking at forty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. That was the number that we put forward. It failed miserably. <laughs> hmm. see, you know. um, so, uh, you know, I, I guess that tells you a little bit about how I feel about this. <laughs> I, well, I, this the the, the idea. Of, uh, the, if you read through the master plan and you see how people in each town can actually feel about these sorts of issues that are all related to this, uh, in fact, they they were point blank. You know, and saying uh, no big box stores, but they want to be able to buy their socks and underwear. And well, that <laughs> that can still that can still that's, that's that Don that's <laughs> yeah. go-to uh, line. And, and I, I agree. I mean, I, uh, I I I I think that development can be done in a responsible, good way. Sure. Um, I mean, I, I think I think development is good, especially when new growth is. Yep. going to slow as land disappears but um but, but as Dave said they actually a lot of these stores in you know, right Salem I mean, they, they actually are changing their model because so you could still get retail stores I'm not saying we don't want retail stores we don't want but that the model we'd like to have come in East Hampton to a to sort of um, work in tandem with our small businesses is a smaller size and scale retail store you know for the size of our community and the and and what we have so I mean you could still bring in you know retail stores to buy your socks and underwear but you know, just that it would be, I mean, 50,000 square feet, as Dave pointed out, is actually bigger than anything we have existing today. Really so, I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm almost questioning, I mean, <laughs> remember I came in at 45,000. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as I, as I look, and I think, I mean, 50,000 is pretty big. It's pretty big. Um, and, and, and help me paint a picture. Um, so if we have multiple parcels and we have multiple Developments that are all at building out to the max because I mean, if you're a developer, you're probably going to want to max it out if you can to get the most for your money. Mm -hmm. it, it, so how? And and as, and as we look at the planned business development, uh, this you know shrinking from five to three, um, they can have within that planned business development. Are we talking about them being able to have a fifty thousand square foot building in addition to other? things within this planned business development? Or are we talking, because I mean, think about like, I think when I think of a planned business development, I think of Box Plaza. You know, would work in tan all the stores working basically as one tandem unit. So we're talking 50 square, 50 square, 50,000 square for the entire, right. hopefully designed better. So you're saying now that up on South Main Street, they can only put in 50,000 feet on 70 acres? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Which, which? Uh, feed our piece up there. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much how it would how it would go. Yeah. They just passed a they just passed some zoning with a sending and receiving. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where you can buy green land and keep it green <laughs> and send it. 
Oh, that's, course, um, nobody signed up for rights. it. Okay. Right, right. Well, that was the gist. That was a lot. I feel like but, I did that one. So you're right. Right. Yeah. just to play devil's advocate because I really don't care, and I really don't care. You can make a twenty thousand feet for all. You don't care now. <laughs> <laughs> We're beating so bad. We don't care. We really, truly don't care. Okay. Okay. What are you going to do when they blow up a target on going into Northampton on Northampton Street? That's all. Places are all for sale now. They're open. They're blowing that whole strip open within the next three or four years. There's a bookstore, a book uh, place coming that's sixty or seventy thousand or hundred thousand square feet to collect all the books from the five college area going there. Great for the town of Northampton, tax base, jobs, whatever. Great, but they're blowing that open. What are you going to do when they put a target there? Once they put a target, you can kiss all the business in East Hampton goodbye. Well, that's in, but and that's, that's the bottom line. I know but that's in Northampton, right? Yeah. We can't do anything about Northampton. Correct. Well, you can do something. I'm just saying that the, uh, the businesses want to go someplace. Now, right before they opened up Northampton Street, Northampton was full. Okay? So you have some people there nibbling around. Mm -hmm. Now, is Home Depot coming to East Hampton? No. Okay? Is Walmart coming to East Hampton? In a heartbeat, if they can get in. So you want to change your zoning not to allow Walmart and that's fine. Walmart has a 30,000 square foot store now. Mm -hmm. So Walmart's coming in, so come okay? In. Uh, to say to the person that has five acres of land or three acres of land, he can build a 50,000 square foot building. And to say to a person that has 30 acres of land, or 50 acres of land, he can only build a 50,000 square foot building. God bless you, but in a hundred years, John, that it won't 50, pass. 50,000 square feet uh, project would not fit on three acres, not with all the parking and everything. So you wouldn't well, be no, saying, no, you can It's not that, quite yeah. true. It will fit on three acres with this new buying and sending if you read the. No, the, because the uh, this ordinance proposal takes into account transfer of development rights and limits the uh, total developable. Whatever you do, it's 50,000 square foot development. Oh, it is on that? Yeah, yeah, we cut off transfer development rights so you couldn't blow it up. So in other words, you couldn't have somebody sending into a sending area, you know, and basically go beyond a cap and go up, you know, 100,000 square feet or 150,000 square feet. So, so it's, so okay. that's right. So we actually, that was something we accounted for so that, because again, it's all about the building and character. And so we don't want someone just to say, okay, no. well, I have a lot of land so I can send a bunch of rights over here and now, for 150,000 square foot. Well, John, here, here's another thing to consider. As long as there is no cap like this in town, because yep. there is none. Who, right. who in their right mind, you said Walmart would move here in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Who in their right mind then, with the, any business, any developer that does not have a model like Walmart, because Walmart really depends on its size. It can't sell stuff that cheap unless it has stores that were huge. So, as long as the door is wide open for a Walmart to come in any time and blow everybody out of the water. Correct. Who is going to invest in East Hampton? Nobody. Nobody. Absolutely So by putting not. a cap on this, no, nobody can predict the future. But right, right. This should, this should let send a signal to people that want to develop smaller developments that it's pretty safe to do so here, that there is no big box going to move into town and put them out of business. Correct. And then what happens is Walmart in particular uh, a little research on them. They have a history of going into towns, sinking everybody, and then moving on to some other uh, geographical location. You know, something that's better for bringing this right. very non environmental, too. Right. Having people come from all these other communities driving into one location, you know, to buy something like a pair of socks, which of course you can buy at a like, drugstore if you want. But, but anyway, if, if these. Um, um, just to put on your thing there for one second, sorry, yeah. but just, you know, the, uh, it, what Walmart could do is come in, hurt our retail business, hurt our grocery business, put, you know, with a, a large, like a Walmart, like a super center, put that out, and then when they close up and pick up, you know, pick up Anchor and move on, now East Hampton kind of becomes a captive audience, and so you're going to have to go to their stores in Northampton, you're going to have to go to their stores in Hoyoke. You know, they have the power, as they you say. You also end up with a huge building that's now abandoned. To the today, right. we'll try to find somebody. Now they have a, a campaign saying that they'll try to find new... Like sub, uh, sub uh, Yeah, somebody. But uh, they will come with a clouded deed or a clouded arrangement that says you can't compete with us, especially if they've only moved to, to the next town over. Right. Uh, so. so a question. 
Um, say, I, say I have 50 acres. Right. And I parcel it. Yeah. There you go. Um, right. Would I be able to parcel it and Absolutely. still build on each parcel? Okay. Absolutely. No, I'm, and, uh, just, I'm, just, I'm not against that. But, I'm uh, but the problem is, too, would the, the town now allows one driveway for development? Okay? You can put in one driveway. Now we have 33 acres of land. We're allowed one driveway. Off of Route 10, right? Off of Route 10. That's right, yeah. Okay. Or for a mixed use development, period. Okay? Now they just. They just passed a mixed-use development on uh, David Boyle's piece up on uh, Northampton Street. Mm -hmm. Look into that. And then after you look into that, we'll have a discussion on it. What, what, what should uh, what's we look into? Is that three what's about, what about that? They put mixed-use on three acres, three and a half acres. Oh, right. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right, right. Um, hey, you have variance for that? Or? What's that? I think he got a variance for that or something, didn't he? I, I a variance for what? No, I think no variance. Think a special permit. Yeah. Couldn't get a variance because he couldn't have to, right. have to prove right. financial dis. Hmm. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. <laughs> the last thing you ought to be worried about, but that, and I don't care because you're not going to affect us. It doesn't matter. I mean, fifty thousand feet is a lot of a lot of property, yeah. a lot of building, and but you got to consider, you know, what's going to happen down the road. Uh, you know, once you, if you build in Southampton, you're going to move the tra change the traffic flows into Southampton. You know, so now you got Northampton and Southampton, East Hampton sitting there the way it is now. Hmm. Um, okay. So, but you know, the, at fifty thousand, certainly a big enough building for anybody. Yeah, fifty thousand is very big. But if you have a big piece of land, wouldn't it make more sense to maybe put a 50,000, a 10,000, a 12,000 Outback Steakhouse, 16 ounce scotches, <laughs> you know, in, uh, with one driveway? Well, if you have one road in and you do it like a, like a, like yeah. a development, like a subdivision. Yeah. So but not? you're saying you so can't do that. No, no. But, well, that's, that's not, it depends on how you consider the parcel. Mm -hmm. Is it one huge parcel or can you? Break it up into smaller. Yeah, well, what smaller that, parts. It's better the way it, it does it. Yeah. It, well, I mean, the I other mean, thing to consider, which is hard for people that don't own property, aren't involved, it's absolute unbelievable hell to get somebody to come in and work on your property and build something today. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in for wheelbarrows full of money and nothing's happening. Literally wheelbarrows full of money, millions, and nothing, no, no bulldozer, no digging. And you've got all approvals, everything. No, we don't have right? all the approvals. We got crap approvals. Well, then maybe that's why nobody's there. With the that's one of the reasons, yeah. Right. But you know, will we survive it? Maybe. How's the town doing, though? You know, does the town need the growth? And unfortunately, if you looked into. What, uh, what the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is doing to this town and what's going to happen with what they're doing five years down in taxes and stuff. Not a pretty sight. You know, everybody thinks money's free. Your parents taught you there is no free lunch. Well, John, so you're talking about like development as a means of, of uh, uh, gaining more revenue in, by way of taxes, yeah. property taxes. Yeah. Well, what town, can you think of any place that's really Developed, fully developed. It's swimming in black ink right now. Probably. Then how come? So if they're doing so well, how come they're having such a hard time redoing their municipal buildings and everything? Well, I didn't know they were, but uh, they are. They're having a really hard time coming up with the money to figure out. They've been doing it for years, for the yeah. past ten years. Yeah. So, so, so I mean, I guess the thing is just a little bit, and um, I have a couple of things. Um, so, uh, has this been? Because this needs to go to the planning board as well, right? That's right. And has it been? Have they gotten it? Have, has the has the clock started? No. Okay. I had typically so, you have uh, joint meetings. We so. do. We'll have a joint public hearing together. I, I just didn't know if they had this on their agenda yet. They do not. Okay. So that's so we'll, I'll, I'll talk to Barbara about getting this sent down to them. Um, and then, then once, um, then once they get it, the clock will start ticking. Okay. And um, and then we'll hold our joint meeting. 
And I mean, we're, you know, we'll, we're, we're going to talk this one upside down and backwards and inside out. And it's good. I mean, it's good. I think it's it's, a, it's really well um, well done as far as being able to understand it. And um, it looks very thorough. And I, I like, um, I still think it's a little big, but. Uh, <laughs> I'll take to the bill. 50,000. Can, can I say one more but thing? But that's okay. I mean, it's part of the proposal, and that is the changing the definition. It's all part of the same deal. Changing the definition for. Uh, square foot uh, gross floor area okay. and uh, that has already been vetted by the uh, building inspector uh, I went to him with it uh, uh, Jessica Allen had suggested that I go there and I learned by Joe he looked at it uh, I think probably the main feature of that is that the um, our current definition uh, calculates gross floor area outside wall to outside wall right, so this would be uh, inside from inside, that inside right which so uh, there's no penalty for having really thick, you know, massive, well insulated, Good insulated wall. Yeah. Yeah. Well, green. So it doesn't it doesn't penalize green. That's right. right. Exactly. Which makes yeah. sense. Um, and we can add in a renewable energy uh, bonus. <laughs> sure. I mean, it makes sense, especially in those areas where there's a lot of no trees to right. obscure. So. A lot of roof, a lot of roof, thousand square foot building, a lot of roof over an acre. Yeah. So anyway, um, I, I appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, uh, we'll fill Nathan in. Um, so like I said, I'll send this down to the planning board. Uh, and we'll we'll meet on it. I'm gonna. I think we'll probably maybe look at this a little bit more. Go at, at, as the, a full committee and, and really dig into it. Um, but it's really good to get this this information and uh, hear your, hear your proposal. So. Appreciate that. You guys have anything else you want to add? Or do you have any questions for these guys? Over there? I have some larger questions just based on some of the things that came up. So I'm just going to type out the notes okay. and make sure we address them back. Great. Next. Awesome. All right. Great. Thanks. So we'll keep working on this. Thank you. And uh, get it going. Right. Thanks, guys. All righty. Thank you for coming. And how about we. Uh, Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, here we go. All in favor. It's great when there's two of us, right? <laughs> Robert's rules seem silly when there's two people. Okay, thanks for coming. Good night. Good night. So, what do you think, John? You got, I, I think really <laughs> interested in any Well, as I told you, uh, you probably so want like to email the Walmart operation. Oh, cool. Okay. No, it's not going to be the same as the Walmart operation. It's not going to be the same after what the town put us through. Right, you would probably do it differently. Like kiss their ass. Yeah, that's right. Kiss their ass that. right now. Is the camera? I don't know if the camera works. you ought to do the camera. Oh, yeah. Looks like it's still on. <laughs> <laughs> We've had this discussion before, you know. It's still on. Yes. Yeah, it's still People on. want fair in town. Yes. I want to be treated.